Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another podcast episode. My name is Alicia Gogan, the host of the Glow Up Secrets podcast, where I help you expand your mind and become more self-aware so that you can glow up into the best version of yourself. And girlies, we are here. Part one of a very long series this summer, all about how you are going to glow up into the best version of yourself. Now, this episode is going to be dedicated to our physical health how you can become the healthiest version of you this summer. So I asked you guys on the podcast Instagram, which go follow that page if you have not, the Glow Up Secrets podcast. And you guys had a variety of questions. And I also came up with an outline, of course, of the episode. And I realized that I need to split it up into two parts because we will be talking forever. So today I want to touch on a lot of things. I want to touch on fitness, of course. I want to touch on nutrition. I want to talk about skin. I want to talk about sleep. I basically want to talk about all the internal things that will help you become the healthiest version of you. In part two, I want to talk about how to have that ultimate glow up, that external glow up, where we'll touch on finding your style, looking your best, but on a budget slash low maintenance as well, because a lot of you guys had that question. You guys also really wanted me to touch on skincare and body care, like products and recommendations along with beauty routines. So we'll definitely touch on that, but You guys know, when we're talking about anything to do with self-improving, glowing up, we need to go to the root and we need to look internally. We need to focus on our internal health if we want to truly not only feel glowed up, but look glowed up. Because there was a point in my time where I really just thought that makeup and outfits and having a certain body shape, that was going to be the thing that made me look glowed up to other people, but also I was going to feel glowed up just by the makeup that I was putting on or the outfits and or me trying to change my body by like losing weight just for aesthetics. But I realized as I grew up that my glow comes from health, comes from becoming the healthiest version of myself. And yes, of course, I wear makeup. Yes, I make sure that my outfits are looking nice and my hair, whatever. But when I'm thinking about being magnetizing, when I'm thinking about being the most glowed up version of myself, I am focusing first and foremost on my internal health. And that's what we need to talk about today. So let's talk about fitness. You guys ask me all the time on Instagram what my fitness routines are. You guys are struggling with staying consistent at the gym. You guys uh, have certain body goals, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll definitely tell you guys what I do because you guys ask all the time, but I'm just gonna give you a few pointers and give you some advice when it comes to fitness, when it comes to moving your body. By the way, Just to preface this whole episode, I used to be a personal trainer. I used to be a health coach. I technically still can be. Um, I also went to school for workplace wellness and health promotion. I went to school for other things as well, but I have been in this health and wellness field for a very long time. And on top of that, I've gone through a very lengthy journey with my health, my health issues, autoimmune diseases, so many ups and downs with my relationship with food, my relationship to myself. And I've come out on the other side. So I really have been through, I'm not saying every single thing, but I understand the struggle. I understand the constant cycles that sometimes we might be getting in. And I really want to touch on some of those things and and try to give you guys really good advice to get you to become the healthiest version of yourself when it comes to fitness and health. Because you know, truthfully, it's not about the fact that we don't really have the information that we and we don't know what to do in the gym. Like, yes, maybe if you're like beginner, 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 you might actually need to like learn movements and stuff. But realistically, it takes nothing to go online and find a workout. It takes nothing to go online and find an easy meal plan and follow it. There's it's nothing to find the information. It's just we get in our own ways. We really, really struggle with staying and being consistent and doing all these things. So I'm going to give you some tips on what has helped me when it comes to fitness and health and all of this stuff so that hopefully you can follow and pick up some advice as well. So when it comes to fitness, you really do need to choose movement that feels good to you and that you enjoy because 
We're going to look at everything realistically, fitness, nutrition, our in, internal systems, health in general. We want to keep things sustainable. Do We do not want to be up and down. Yes, is it going to be like a normal thing for us to maybe gain some weight sometimes or lose some muscle and ebb and flow through life? Yes, and that's totally fine. But realistically, do you want to just only be fit for the summer or do you want to be fit for life? And in order for you to be healthy always, and of course, when I'm saying always, it doesn't always to be always like there's so many times where I wasn't necessarily the most pinnacle health for me but you know what I mean you really need to do things that you will be able to sustain and this also doesn't mean that if you pick weightlifting and you really like weightlifting that doesn't mean that you need to weightlift every single time, every season, all throughout the year, right? There's definitely times where maybe you want to pick up doing Pilates or you want to do yoga or you want to do some form of activity but Pick an activity that you enjoy and allow yourself to switch it up, but make sure that you're switching it up only because you really want to try something new and you're like kind of a little bit bored in the gym, not being like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to do like weightlifting, but then like three seconds later you go on TikTok and someone's saying, oh, don't do weightlifting, Pilates is the way, so then you start doing that and then it's like, oh, maybe I should do yoga or maybe I should do this, that, no. What do you enjoy doing? Because realistically, you are going to see results with any movement truly, but that's going to depend on how consistent you are. And of course, making sure that you're training properly with the movements that you're doing and you're not just like half-assing things, but do something that you will end up committing to and enjoying because the more that we have these routines in our lives that we do not enjoy, we will not keep them. We just won't. We we are like human beings and we look for comfort. And this is not to say that you want to build a life where there's no uh, discomfort because obviously we need that, but it's going to work to your benefit if you choose things that you enjoy. Another tip when it comes to fitness, fitness goals, because you know, usually we start this journey because we have a certain goals. And I know this sounds really hard and being like, wait, what? But try your best to detach from the outcome because when we focus on that end goal so, so heavily, we no longer enjoy the process. We no longer look at fitness as a way of a lifestyle. We look at as a means to an end, which, you know, the goal will come, the body will come, the health will come. But realistically, you should be always doing this movement anyways. And that is why you aren't healthy or you're not fit in the first place is because you don't have these routines. So you should always just naturally be doing these things anyways. But what we do is we only focus on the end goal and we only use fitness as as a thing to get us what we are really wanting, which usually what we really want is the body so that we can feel good. But when I mean feel good, I mean that external validation or to feel like we are lovable now. And what's helped me detach from that outcome is realizing, okay, sure, I have a goal to grow my peach, which I say this all the time, like that's the energy that I'm in right now this summer. I want to grow my glutes, but I know I am inherently lovable, I'm attractive, my body is nice, without me um, having bigger glutes, like if I don't, like for some reason, let's say my body just like doesn't change and my glutes just do not grow, I will still be okay with my body. I will still be happy with it. I have a goal to grow my glutes because I know they can grow and I know that I do have weaker glutes. And on top of that, not just for the aesthetics, which obviously a nice ass looks great, right? Obviously. But for me, my low back, when I don't have strong glutes, my low back starts to hurt. It's just like for functional movement purposes, it's very important. And because I've had a personal training background, like I I see the absolute important benefit of having very strong glutes. So whatever it is, but I, again, I still try to do my best to detach from that outcome because what will happen is when you go into the gym, you're looking at your body every day, you're waiting and you're wondering when the results are going to come by. And then you're like stressing and be like, Oh, maybe it's not coming. Should I change? Should I uh, do Pilates now? Should I scroll and see what everyone else is doing? And then what you do, you compare yourself and you think that you're never going to get there. And then you go into a spiral and then you're like, screw it. I'm not doing what I should. Anyways, I'm just going to like fall off my fitness. I'm going to fall off my whatever. And then it's 
start again Monday and it's this cycle. This needs to be a lifestyle for you. This needs to be something that you are doing out of a place of self-love. And what's helped me as well when it comes to fitness is truly identifying as somebody who goes to the gym, as somebody who enjoys doing yoga or enjoys doing Pilates. Like you really want to ask yourself the question, The version of me that has what she wants, so let's say the version of Alicia who has nice glutes, does she push off the gym? Does she use excuses being like, oh, I'm too tired? Or does she let the narratives like, like does she let herself spiral into the narratives and talk herself out of it? No, she just goes. And I always think about uh, my best friend, Joye, like she has really nice glutes and She's not even somebody who like, I, well, I mean, you could look at her and be like a part of her identity is the fact that she has really nice, nice glutes, but she is just a part of her life to go to the gym. It's a normal thing. She just goes like no excuses. She's not super attached to the outcome and you really got to think about your beliefs here, right? It's like, okay, well, if you know that you going to the gym will get you the results, why are you not showing up consistently? There's got to be some belief of being like, oh, I don't know if I can get it then. Because realistically, if you knew 1000%, you were going to get the glutes if you just continue to keep going, you just keep going. Like we don't need to worry about, will I get it? Is this going to work? Will my body change? Of course it's going to change. Of course, it's going to change. And that's something that I think about towards anything in my life, like especially if I think about um, my YouTube channel, when I started my YouTube channel, I didn't look at how long it was going to take me to gain a certain amount of subscribers or get views or be paid for my content. I had a 100% belief that eventually, if I was consistent and if I kept doing what I wanted to do and I enjoyed the process, I would get my end goal. So I didn't even have to like, I didn't have to like manifest or like think about it super hard. Like it was coming. I trusted that it was coming. And that came from a a deep belief of knowing that it will work. What I'm doing will work. And on top of that, like I back myself, but I'm enjoying the process. Right. But if I didn't enjoy the process, if I didn't like the content that I was making, if I was only just tied to that outcome, of course, on the days that I didn't feel like doing it, I wouldn't do it. So I really just made sure to try to enjoy the process, do what worked for me, reminded myself that yes, it's coming. I ain't got to worry about it. And on top of that, I'm okay right now as I am without being that big YouTuber or without making money on um, YouTube yet or whatever it is. But we are so attached to that outcome of being like, oh my God, until I have the body, then I won't be able to like be loved or until I have the body, I won't be able to enjoy summer. I won't be able to X, Y, Z. I literally see those comments on my YouTube channel and I'm like, you, this is ridiculous. And I get it. I used to be like that, but you, it's, it's going to be up to you to tell yourself a new story. It's going to be up to you to be like, like I am actually lovable right now and everyone will conform to me. But on top of that, I will work and I will get what I want because yeah, I want better for me. It's a natural thing to want to evolve and change, but we, we, we have such like polarizing, I don't know, gaps in between where we are and where we want to be. But the in-between part, we end up getting stuck in these stories. We end up falling off so much that we never get to where we are. And the realistic truth is we can get to where we are, but it's us. We are the ones getting in our own way. So really asking yourself the question, the version of me that has what she wants, how does she think? What actions does she take? What are the stories she's telling herself? How does she feel internally about herself and take action from that place? So I'll just quickly give you a rundown of what I'm currently doing, but I will preface by saying like the the mindset that I have is identifying as somebody who goes to the gym, um, detaching from that outcome. All the things that I just said really help me um, get up and go. And it's like some, sometimes you guys ask me on Instagram, like, how do you find motivation? Da, da. It's, I'm not, I'm not acting out of motivation. I'm acting out of a place of, I identify as somebody who takes care of herself and loves herself and has the body that she wants and has a healthy, whatever, like, lifestyle X, Y, and Z. But I was weightlifting a long time ago in college. And then I took a very long break throughout my life. I've always been working out, whether that be home workouts for like during COVID. I I took a really long break from um, doing workouts though when I had nerve pain in my hands, but I also was a group fitness instructor and a personal trainer as part of my um, corporate wellness job as well. So I still was always moving, but I last year decided I wanted to get back into like 
proper weightlifting like the way that I used to because I just think that that is like I I enjoy it the most and that's just what I like to do so in around I think November I started going to the gym just doing functional movements body weight I just wanted to get my body like right making sure I was doing movements correctly and then I slowly started to add weights and then I ended up going to a box gym so that I could have the barbells and actually do the hip thrusts and deadlifts and get the movements going because that's really where you're going to build that strength that muscle it's not to say you can't at home but for me personally I find the quickest results and the best results by really weightlifting now for me I have a few main goals uh, three of them I would say is one I want to grow my peach it has the potential I got a nice body let's add some more muscle on there but in general I want to overall have more muscle on my body because it's so healthy especially as a woman to have muscle on your body like what gone are the days that we need to just like be skinny and listen if you're if you identify somebody who's like skinny and small that's totally fine I'm I'm pretty small as well but for us to have muscle is so helpful for our hormones so helpful for our metabolism like oh everything okay so um, muscle is very important to me but I, I guess what I'm saying peach like growing my glutes it's more of that aesthetic if I were to have an aesthetic goal but again I'm very like it, it's fine if I don't but I I do I have a nice body and on top of that just being functional I just want to do functional movements so I do lots of compound movements right now at the gym I do two to three leg days a week and then two upper body days um, if I'm feeling like I want to do like a 12 3 30 moment and do some cardio I will I do a lot of hot girl walks but I keep mainly the same compound moves um, every time that I do my leg days and upper body but let's just talk about leg days um, because it doesn't need to be difficult it really doesn't and I used to be somebody who would do like a million different exercises and I would change things up all the time but I was doing that from a place of like I didn't see results so I just wanted to keep like trying everything but knowing what I know now and um, working in the industry for so long simple is honestly what's going to get the job done and so what I do right now in the gym is I do my Romanian deadlifts I do hip thrusts and I do split squats and I use a cable adductor machine I make sure to warm up on the treadmill I do a lot of dynamic stretching and dynamic stretching is basically moving through the range of motion that you would be doing like let's say if you're actually doing the hip thrust or the deadlifts but obviously just like body weight um just making sure that everything is loose everything is good to go if you really are interested in dynamic stretching you can just go on google and or sorry youtube and just find um mind pump media has really good um demonstrations of things um and then and sorry versus static stretching which is like the normal stretching that you would think about when you think about stretching when you like sit and hold um you stretching at your hamstrings for like 30 seconds or a minute so I do dynamic stretching before along with that warm-up and then I also do a lot of priming so I make sure to use the glute bands I'm squeezing my glutes I'm waking them up I'm doing certain priming movements and then I go into my actual working set so I do a lot of warming up because it's so important when you are weightlifting and you really want the results that you want, you got to be serious with it. This is another thing, right? It's like I'm identifying as somebody who is essentially, I sometimes look at myself like an athlete. Like I am training and I'm training properly. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly. And I'm going to take care of myself as I should. I don't want injuries. And on top of that, if I want to see the results that I want, I cannot half-ass things. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to the gym and just doing like a 20 minute, like squeezing my glutes with like glute brands. Like I used to do that. And that's great because you know, your, your body can change, but I, I'm identifying as somebody who takes this very, very seriously. And then of course I go in, um, with my deadlifts, my hip thrust. So I'm using the barbell the whole entire time. I'm putting like 45, I'm honestly lifting a lot. I usually up my weight every single week, but I make sure that I'm doing the form correctly before I even add any more weight. So I have a program that I've written for myself. I'm obviously not going to go through like the programming, but you can easily, find how to program a workout online. I would say if you're really interested in weightlifting, go to Mind Pump Media. They definitely help. But honestly, just being consistent with your lifting, making sure that you're feeling your muscles that you are trying to work as well, the mind-body connection, making sure that you're not in your head and you're actually in your body when you're doing these things, making sure you're stretching after is gonna be so key. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I wanted to give you guys a few workout ideas because I know not everyone goes to the gym and weightlifts, but you guys, are just like what do I do I want to start something Sydney Cummings on YouTube has I think the best 
workouts for free and she does it's obviously all at home so you can she has many challenges she does a lot of them so it's like a 30 day challenge or like a 45 day challenge or summer whatever and she has everything she has hit she has cardio she has muscle building she has body weight she has every single thing whether you have equipment or you don't and she is an actual like personal trainer like she knows what she's doing she also doesn't do those um like 10 minute like um lose fat in your abs like and quickly done like no she knows what she's doing so I highly highly recommend if you just don't know where to start and you want to follow something she has got it down and she really talks you through a lot of form as well um if you like yoga yoga with adrian she also has a lot of challenges so you can do like a morning yoga session with her um again this is all free grow with joe she also has a youtube channel with lots of different workouts again same type of vibe she also has a app as well which i actually did a brand deal with them and so so if you want to try a seven day free trial with them i'll actually link that in the show notes if you want and of course I can't not recommend going on a hot girl walk. And what helps the hot girl walks is literally just putting in a podcast episode, putting on your favorite soundtrack, putting on your whatever audiobook, and just going for a freaking walk. And for me, even during my cycle, sometimes I will make sure to like, usually I try to end my, um, what is it? Luteal phase, I should say on a high note so like I end my heaviest workout my leg day or whatever and then usually for a few days I will go into the gym but maybe I'm not lifting as heavy and or I'm just doing different activities I'm switching things up I'm not super attached like I I know that I'll be back in the gym I still make sure that I'm moving my body and that's that okay let's talk about nutrition and this is where I think people struggle even more so than with fitness and I'm gonna just preface all of this by saying, if you struggle with binge eating, if you struggle with on and off dieting, if you really are consumed by food, you need to go to the root as to why you are struggling so heavily. I was there and no matter what diet I tried to put myself on, counting macros, counting calories, going vegan, going keto, going paleo, um, clean eating, uh, low inflammation, literally any diet, no matter what, there's no diet that is going to fix the unhealthy relationship that one has with themselves when you get to that level. I'm not trying to scare you and be like, you're never going to be able to change. No, no, no. You will. Because I I swear to God, I literally thought there was no way I was ever going to be able to get out of binge eating. And also orthorexia, which is the obsession of eating only healthy food and everything else that came with my unhealthy relationship with food. Like I literally did not think that I was ever going to get out of it. Um, and the thing that I had to realize was I had to stop fad dieting. I had to stop obsessing. I had to stop self-hating. I had to stop telling myself that only until my body looks like this, then I will be lovable then I will be accepted on top of that I also had this incessant need to always eat a lot of candy and that part was really um, my inner child taking over every time I felt uncomfortable emotions that I didn't know how to deal with so I would use candy to suppress that part of me but on top of that when I had a certain aesthetic goals that was obviously getting in my way because I would be restricting myself and then I'd want to eat even more and on top of that I was afraid to eat uh, candy or eat whatever because I told myself that it was so bad but then of course I would do it, but I was also doing it because I really was stressed in my life. I lived in a very stressful environment. There was still a lot of trauma that I didn't go through. I didn't work through. So I was going to food a lot of the time. So, you know, you really need to start to address your emotional eating if you struggle with this. And most people do. Most people are in the state of not accepting themselves. So they are hyper focused on getting this thing outside of them, which means diet, diet, diet. And then on top of that, you know, there's probably things that you run to food for and learning how to cope in healthier ways is definitely going to really help you and detaching from that need, that obsessive need to change yourself and I know it can be difficult but I promise you that is the way that you are going to heal so here is a few tips and advice this is things that I do as somebody who is a very healthy uh, balanced eater um, and again this first started with me addressing my mental health it wasn't me addressing my uh, nutritional health or my fitness. I actually had to drop that for a long time. And it wasn't like dropping it to the point where I could never eat 
good food or uh, never work out, but I really had to take my focus off of it. And it's very hard. I get it. Um, so anyways, this is what I do now. Here's some tips. Eating balance is going to be your best friend. You trying to tell yourself that you just can never, ever, ever have pizza or chocolate or anything. It really will be hard to do that when you have been struggling with a healthy, un- sorry, unhealthy relationship with food. You know, I'm not going to say that there aren't people out there that really just never consume that. But I think that when you are struggling, it's even worse to put those restrictions on you. So you're better off just not doing so much restricting and instead focusing on eating balanced meals that will actually fill you up and make you feel satiated. And that's going to depend, right? It's not up to me to tell you what you'll like, but I find that the more you start to explore the more you actually have the proper nutrients that you need for your body within your food, it will definitely help you with combating some of these incessive cravings and unhealthy attachments to foods that are not obviously the best for you. Also, girls, meals before coffee. Listen, I'm not the most 100% perfect with this, but that was something that I really wanted to change about how I was eating uh, last year, especially when it comes to like building muscle and stuff. I was like, I cannot, and my hormones though. It was more for my hormones and just realizing like, I should not be waking up every morning and just having coffee and then pushing it to like 12 o'clock. Like, come on, that's not the pinnacle of health. Okay, we want to be strong. We want to be having healthy levels of muscle on our bodies. We want our hormones to be balanced. We want to feel good. We want to actually um, learn how to have real natural energy coming from our bodies instead of, you know, all this caffeine and then just like um, living off of no energy and just like 18 cups of coffee a day. Like we're not doing that. Come on. And I always like to remind myself, like when I think about me having a child and it's okay if you don't want one and whatever, but my body needs to be primed. Like I need to be very healthy in order for me to carry a child, or at least that's what I want for myself. That is my goal. And um, me waking up every day and drinking coffee, not having balanced meals, just snacking on whatever I want without realizing, okay, does this have a good amount of protein in it? Does it have healthy fats? Is it fueling me? Next thing that is very helpful is to plan your meals and keep it simple, okay? Especially when you are trying to change your eating habits and, you know, go on a health and wellness journey. Oh my gosh, honestly, like just make it simple. Like I said, even with the the way that I'm working out, find the foods that you like, okay? Obviously make sure that you're incorporating healthy fats like the macronutrients, protein, carbs, fats. If you need to educate yourself, simply go on Pinterest and search in what's healthy, what's, you know, not the best. And realistically, we know what's good for us and what's not, okay? Like we we really do know. So keeping it simple, I like to prep a lot of my protein for the week and then I'll make like a big Greek salad. Actually, we'll, we'll get into my current favorites, but, you know, just kind of cycling through a few meals throughout the week will help. Obviously, eating from home as much as you can can help you. And again, it, for me, it's, well, actually, it's kind of good because it just, you save money that way, but I know the nutritional value of the food that I eat at home will most likely 95% of the time be better than what I'm eating out. So I just like think about it in that sense. And I like how I feel when I'm eating foods that fuel me, that fill me up, that are nutritiously dense. And so naturally I identify as somebody who eats healthy. Like I, that's just that's been my identity for a very long time. But of course, when I go out, I don't restrict myself. I am don't consume myself with the food. I eat what I want. And, you know, somebody who does really take care of themselves, I still do pick the option that makes me feel the best. Pick the option that has a lot of protein in it so supports my goals, but not from a place of being like, oh my God, I can't have this. I can't have that. This is bad for me. That is bad for me. I used to have that mindset when I would go out and I would be so consumed with it and it would take at the present moment. So I no longer do that. Eating a variety of foods will definitely help you as well when it comes to nutrients and vitamins, minerals, things obviously like that. Um, Thinking about eating the rainbow. So uh, cycling through different types of vegetables. You can eat seasonally. Trying to incorporate things that you might not have had before can be very helpful, especially for your gut health. But listen to your body as well. Like you have to realize not every single day you're going to feel the exact same, especially if you are working out or there's a day that you have or depending on certain goals that you have in mind. And on top of that, if you're a female and you're going through a cycle, like I eat way more in my luteal phase, moving into my menstrual phase than I do when I'm 
ovulating because naturally that's just where my body goes. I make sure to support myself, which if you guys don't already know, I have lots of videos on cycle syncing and supporting your body through that, but don't be afraid to put trust in your body. Another thing I like to do is I like to prioritize the most important meals for me before, let's say I have the coffee or let's say before I go out and drink with my friends or before I go and I know that I'm going to indulge in like ice cream with my friends later, I make sure to still eat for one. I don't like starve myself because I know I'm going out. Um, and on top of that, I, I make sure to prioritize the protein, make sure that I'm having a balanced meal just so that I feel good and that I'm taking care of myself again. Like you want to take care of yourself. What? Let's not deprive. Let's stop not taking care of ourselves, honestly. Another thing I wrote is realize that your diet won't be the thing that makes you healthy. It's going to be all aspects. It's going to be your fitness. It's going to be your nutrition. It's going to be heavily your mental health. It's going to be your environment. It's going to be your sleep. It's going to be so many things. So don't just look at uh, your diet and hyper focus on this because I'm telling you, it's it's not just your diet. Now, some of the current favorite foods that I have, and listen, you guys got to follow me on Instagram, Alicia Gogan, if you want to see my food because I'm always posting usually the same things, but right now these are the things that I'm really into. Um, I'm into yogurt bowls and it's a great high protein uh, snack. It's good if you like a sweet tooth or you have a sweet tooth. And what I do is I get plain Greek yogurt without the additives just because I stay away from, that's another thing I should say. I try to just stay away from additives and a lot of stuff that's processed and things that are just added that don't need to be added into my food. I try to make sure I just eat more whole foods, uh, proteins. I try and get high quality sources of proteins. Again, making food from home. These are simple shifts that naturally you don't have to hyper focus on and they will make such a big difference for you. So anyways, the Greek yogurt bowls, I make sure to get plain Greek yogurt and I will add my own honey into it. I add some frozen blueberries. I get dark chocolate, um, dark chocolate chips, and I add granola and that is literally the best. It's like if you really are craving ice cream, you could totally have that and it'd be amazing. And on top of that, that'd be supporting probably some of your goals, your health goals, um, hitting your protein intake. Right now, I've also been obsessed with protein smoothies. So I add... A lot of ice. I add mixed berries. So I do strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries in it. I add grass fed whey protein. I add some of my athletic greens that just has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. And then I add some oat milk with a little bit of orange juice. And I know it sounds a little bit weird, but I promise you it tastes really good. And I add Greek yogurt into that. So it's a very high protein, very healthy smoothie. You can also always add spinach into your smoothie. I've been loving salmon bowls. So I'll just bake salmon in the oven for like 20 minutes, add some lemon, add some seasoning onto it, have some nice rice with some avocado and some kimchi on it. I freaking love it. I've been loving beef jerky as a snack and I'll have it with some marble cheese or sometimes not with Melba toast and beef jerky is a really high protein snack. By the way, obviously you can tell I am not a vegan. I, I eat a very balanced diet. This is just what works for me. <laughs> um, a really good snack is frozen grapes. Girls, if you have not tried frozen grapes, this is the summer to try them. Uh, Greek salad is so good. I've been making it. Um, I cut up cucumbers. I do vine tomatoes. I don't add olives because I don't like it. I do lots of extra virgin olive oil. I do balsamic vinaigrette and I add feta cheese in it. And it's a very healthy, high fat salad. And for me, I don't stray away from fat. Like it's very healthy. Like obviously depending on which type of fat that you're incorporating into your diet, avocado, extra virgin olive oil, feta cheese, if you are not like dairy free, things like that. Like those are good in my opinion. Listen, I've had that mindset where, oh, dairy's bad or gluten's bad or inflammation this or that and I like trust me you can come and look at my freaking bookshelf and I have every freaking book under the sun when it comes to things and on top of that I did have a like I dealt with autoimmune diseases I've dealt with everything like I've told you and I still come back to eating this way even knowing that yeah maybe dairy technically could not be that good for you x y and z da, da, da. I don't think like that anymore and it works for me so anyways that's just what I do um when I go out I try like especially with like my, my, my coffees if I get coffees I'll just ask for less sweetener in the coffee not because I'm trying to save on calories but simply because I don't like the sweetness and on top of that I just don't need the extra the extra sweetness the extra gunk you know um, I just try and make sure that I have high protein when I'm going out I'm getting a good source of protein but yeah that's kind of like 
what I do right now in terms of eating. But again, if you are really struggling with your eating, you got to focus on the mental health. All right, let's talk about skin. So we're going to talk about skin from a place of like an internal system versus skin care, like things you can put on your skin. Because realistically, um, the thing that's helped my skin the most is making sure that my mental health is good, that I'm working out and that I'm eating good. So we can talk about products all day. And yes, sure, they make a difference in terms of maybe like fine lines and wrinkles or make it kind of like your skin kind of glow. By the end of the day, if you are breaking out a lot, if you're having a lot of hormonal issues, if you're having whatever, you got to look from the inside. Something on, Something's going on in there. One of the things that I had that really affected my skin uh, was ulcerative colitis. On top of when I used to have just hormonal issues from my period, things like that, even now that I cycle sync and I really take care of my body from a hormonal perspective, I don't even really get breakouts like I did around my period. But on top of that, um, something that I really struggled with was um, I would get lots of breakouts because of my digestive system and my gut health was really, really messed up. And you could tell from my skin. I was breaking out all the time. And um, you can tell really where um, what's kind of affecting your skin. I wouldn't say hyper focus on this, but um, you can go on to Pinterest or like Google, whatever, and look up skin mapping. I used to always get breakouts right around my lower parts of the cheek, like not near my mouth, but like lower parts of the cheek. And that's really correlated with the digestive system, which I knew it was like, I knew I wasn't, I was not healthy internally. So I really had to address those issues. So obviously if you have anything that's crazy, you got to go see a doctor, you got to see what's going on. But again, really trying to take care of yourself in a more balanced way. Not, I know it's hard when you do have skin issues or you have a health issue. You just want it to be done. You just want it to go away and you're starting to hyper-focus on which diet and you're going back and forth. But think about it, consistency, making sure your mental health is okay, detaching from the need and the want to have this thing change. It will change, I promise you and I get that it's hard you just want clear skin you just want your your health back like I get it I've been through so many things but I promise you hyper focusing on the thing you don't want will not get you the thing that you really want you got to start focusing on the version of you that has what she has and something that's helped me with skin issues is just reminding myself like it's okay that I have breakouts it's okay that my skin's not where it wants to be right now clearly you know it's okay that my health is not exactly where I need to be I'm working on it but it's okay that it's not and again working on your mental health and how you view yourself and your health will really help you in the process of, you know, balancing out things so that your skin start to glow. Because honestly, come on, we are meant to have glowing skin girlies. And so people will talk about gut health all the time, um, supplements that you can be taking, things that you can be doing because your gut health will affect your skin. But if you have poor gut health, most likely, not most likely, you are definitely stressed, right? And um, stress comes from your external environment and what goes on in your head and the stories that you're telling yourself and the things that are probably not processed. So, number one you have to work on your mental health and I know it sounds very counterintuitive because like no just give me the supplement I'm telling you there's so many people that come to me and they're like what supplement can I uh, use to stop the bloating babe you've you've been having bloating for 10 years it's time to work on your trauma because this is the thing when you are mentally stressed your body has a biological response to that stress. Whether something in your environment is actually stressing you out, which for me, there definitely was times where my environment was literally unsafe. But on top of that, it can just be the perceived stress that you are constantly creating in your mind, the stories, the obsession, the ruminating. So not only does your body from a biological level actually respond to the stress, which can create a lot of gut health issues. It also affects your actions and your routines in your life. So when you're stressed, yeah, you are more likely to talk yourself out of not going to the gym. Um, When you are in a low state of self-worth, you're not really taking care of yourself. Like there's so many things that will, your mental health will affect the actions that would actually lead you to better health. And those actions are movement, are eating well, are having a social life, are getting outside, having a purpose in life, figuring out what your passions are, things like that. All of those biopsychosocial really things 
do affect your gut does affect your skin. I'm telling you, every single thing is connected. I promise you, it's not going to be one little um, skincare product or a probiotic or anything. So please, when it comes to you addressing your health, you have to look at things from a holistic standpoint. How is your mental health? How is your social health? How is your financial health? What are you thinking about on a daily basis? What are the actions that you're taking day to day? And it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't have to address every single part, but you need to start to actively take some more um, responsibility for the things that are going on in your life. And I get it. It's not always you. I used to live in an environment that was very toxic and I was unhealthy, but it's going to be up to you to do something different, to perceive things different, to go get extra help if you need to. But I promise you, I promise you you can do it. But let me quickly talk about a few things, product-based and I don't know, is it food-based, whatever, um, that you can think about and address. Cause I'm not going to just say that you can't never like take a probiotic or like focus on something that might support you. I used to do this as well, but what I used to do is I would only focus on the products, um, and like nutrition things. And I just thought like that was going to fix my issues and it wasn't. So, um, obviously, like I just said, probiotics can be definitely very helpful if you have any gut health issues. By the way, if you ever struggle with, um, chronic illnesses and anything really that is longer than three months that you've been struggling with can be put under the category of chronic illness. I would suggest going to the podcast Cure for Chronic Pain by Nicole Sachs. She's really changed the game and she helps you uh, address that mental health component that a lot of people struggle with. Anyways, probiotics slash prebiotics. You can get prebiotics in literally just your food. So um, like kimchi would be a good uh, source of prebiotics. L-glutamine in the morning on an empty stomach can be helpful. By the way, I've spent a lot of money on uh, naturopaths and doing holistic testing and all these things too. So I'm not just like pulling this out of my ass. I also have been recommended by lots of different doctors um, to take some of these supplements. That's that's why I am um, suggesting some of these. But again, this is going to be up to you. I'm not saying that you have to take it and it's going to fix everything. Like I promise you, please, this is just a a recommendation or suggestion. Um, Boswella, which is it's, I don't know where, like where that comes from, but B O S W E L L I B A. sorry, at the end of that, I believe that's how you spell it, Boswella. And that supplement is very helpful for inflammation. So if you struggle with a lot of, which I mean, most things are just like created from inflammation, but um, yeah, that's a good supplement if you want to take a look at that. Milk thistle for your liver, um, which can help you rid some excess toxins in your body, which can affect your skin as well. Vitamin D3, making sure that you, when you get vitamin D3, that it's paired with K2, it can be very beneficial. Also just focusing on eating food with less shitty fucking ingredients in it. Now, listen, I, again, because of my past, when it comes to unhealthy relationships with food, I do let myself have, um, silk almond milk, the vanilla for like the creamer thing, even though it doesn't have the best ingredients. Like, yes, I do have things because because I, that's just how I have to live my life, but my health is way better and I can tolerate those things because I'm not mentally stressed and I have a very balanced live, um, life, but um, I still make sure to eat uh, foods that just have less crap ingredients in it. Um, for coffee, like sometimes I'll add honey into the coffee if I didn't want to do the vanilla almond milk with a bunch of crap in it. Um, if you really like pop or like sodas, sometimes what I will do is I will get soda water and I will squeeze fresh lemon and I will make honey honey water. So I'll do hot water with a little bit of honey and then I'll add it basically like a simple syrup and I will make it like that. And it's so good. And it literally just, it tastes so refreshing. So those are some things that I would recommend. Um, in terms of actual brands for the supplements that I was talking about, I really like AOR. That's the brand. I believe you can get that in most places. I don't think it's just Canadian, um, but L-glutamine and vitamin D are really good from there. Can Prev, especially their magnesium supplements, but they also have uh, all different products, but they are only available in Canada. Um, Bio Optimizers is a good brand as well, which I think is available in most places. Genestra, especially for probiotics, can be very good. And St. Francis, I find that they're really good with their milk thistle for your hormones. So those are just some of the suggestions. But yeah, okay, two more things. We're almost there. Dental health, I really wanted to quickly touch on. And honestly, a lot of you guys wanted me to touch on this too. I had a very um, long journey with my dental health. I grew up in an environment where um, we didn't have 
insurance and we just didn't have money. And quite frankly, I was also addicted to candy. So I kind of messed up my teeth when I was younger. And I also had a really bad acid reflex problem. Um, I was stressed a lot and um, I kind of ruined a lot of the enamel on my teeth. I wasn't taking care of my teeth. I wasn't flossing. There's a lot of things that I ended up having to pay for when I was in college. And I made sure I literally busted my ass to, um, cause once I got into health and wellness, I was like, oh my gosh, my state of my teeth are aren't good. Like I need to make sure that my gums are good. I need to get all the, like any cavities that needed to be done, like whatever it was, I was getting my teeth fixed. So I'm like, I am not losing my teeth. Like what the heck? So making sure you take care of your teeth. People will say, like I had some comments being like, can you talk about dental health and how it's expensive and like, it's not affordable and this, that listen, if you don't have money to get anything done with your teeth and you need it, you need to start saving money for your teeth. And I get it. It's not fair. And sometimes it's like not nice that you don't have insurance, but save up some money and get your freaking teeth fixed if you need to get them fixed. And when I mean fixed, I just mean if there's a cavity, go get it done. Save up your money. Have a plan in place. Please, please, please. I promise you, you will not regret getting it done. Okay. And we got to not look at it from a place of like, oh my God, I shouldn't have to do this. Listen, it is what it is. But on top of that, making sure your dental hygiene is good. Come on. You're brushing your teeth two times a day. Please, anytime that you're having coffee, anytime that you're having sugar as well, brush your teeth. And if you can't do it in that moment, mouthwash, please. And on top of that, do not sleep on flossing your freaking teeth, okay? I have too many friends in the dental field as well for me to even be slacking on doing any of these, I promise you. When it comes to whitening your teeth, I don't really struggle with not having white teeth. Naturally, my teeth are quite white, um, but... I wouldn't suggest doing white strips because that does strip your enamel. And because I've had this journey with making sure um, that I have good amounts of enamel on your teeth, especially like now, like even my teeth are very sensitive because I just don't have that good of enamel. Um, I stay away from that. I just make sure that I'm brushing my teeth very well, obviously to each their own. I also use a tongue scraper every single morning. I used to oil pull all the time, but I think that was just like too much for me. But yeah, really just committing to taking care of your dental health will be very beneficial for you. And it has been shown that your gut health can be affected by what's going on in your mouth as well. So like, are you brushing and are you being realistic with you saying that you brush twice a day like girl don't be lying and are you brushing for two plus minutes girl don't lie and are you flossing your teeth Thuh. floss your freaking teeth okay and um yeah save up your money if you need to get your teeth done make sure you're getting routine checks make sure you're getting your teeth cleaned i get it it's expensive i don't have insurance but that is something that i have no issue with paying for like no i'm getting my teeth cleaned everything routine somebody talked about what to do with like not having straight teeth i mean again if it's not, that's something what you really want then you can save up for it i don't know if i'm gonna get invisalign i have really straight teeth but i still have that gap i actually got um what's it called composite filling in between my teeth because I had a bigger gap than I have right now um, but it did chip a little bit so I might fix that not sure not really that big of an issue though like I used to like be obsessed with like oh my gosh I need to have straight teeth no it's not even an issue really like maybe I'll get it done maybe I won't but yeah just take care of your teeth okay last thing we're gonna talk about is sleep you need it okay I remember so many times where I wanted to do morning routines and I wanted to be super healthy but I was freaking damn near going to sleep at like 11 30 12 o'clock I was on my phone stressing scrolling thinking about things I shouldn't be thinking about girl get a night routine what I do is I turn off my phone put it on silent mode and I actually put it outside of my room I get you need your phone in your room sometimes for the uh, alarm but whatever it is put it away 10 20 30 if you can do an hour that'd be amazing but realistically even 10 minutes before you go to sleep put it away you don't need to scroll on your freaking phone now what I like to do is I like to fall asleep with things that make me feel like I'm in a good mood. So, you know, some people will say like, don't consume social media and this, that, but sometimes I like listening to my favorite YouTuber that's like getting me in a good mood. They're getting my mind right. I like to listen to things that um, make me feel good because your subconscious is very um, impressionable as right when you're falling asleep as well. So if you're listening to things that you want to be focusing on, you want to change your mindset around, or you just want to be in an energy of just happiness, I really suggest doing what works for you. What makes you feel happy? 
do that. Fall asleep with it. If it's sleep affirmations, if it's guided meditations, if you're stressed, sometimes if I was going through a really stressful time in my life, I would make sure that I was listening to guided meditations, um, affirmations to remind myself that I am safe, that I am loved, that I'm lovable. Everything is going to work out exactly the way it needs to. Um, sometimes white noise can be helpful. Also making sure that you're in a clean environment, something that's really helped me. And this is honestly kind of like a night routine for me is I make sure that my dishes are clean, that I make sure that like my, my bed is nice, my, my actual room. There's no clothes on the ground. The AC is on. I'm in a cool environment. I'm making sure my environment is very much so um, not only like supporting me as I'm sleeping, but I use that as a way as like a ritual to kind of get myself winding down. Make sure your lights are dimmed. Get a lamp if you need to. Also trying to make sure that you don't have caffeine, obviously, like right when you go to sleep. Um, magnesium can help, like a magnesium supplement. Again, that's just like a simple suggestion. Um, but what I do find though is literally sleeping in a cold room will make such a big difference. So whether you have AC or you just have a fan, get a cold room going. So yeah, to sum everything up, you guys already know. The first thing that is going to be so important with anything, whether you realize you're struggling with your fitness, with your health, with your skin, with your sleep, with your whatever, mental health. What's going on in your mind? What are you stressed about? What do you need to work through? What stories are you telling yourself about the thing that you are trying to get? These are things that need to be addressed because again, we can bypass the mental health component and we can go right to the meal plan. We can go to the fitness routine. We can go to the probiotics and the supplements and the whatever. And those are good things that you can work on as you're working on your mental health, but you need to work on the things that um, continue to keep getting in your way. Like if you find that you keep falling off, then okay, let's look a little bit deeper. And uh, you know, people will say like, okay, so do I just only address my mental health and not work out or like not eat healthy or try to eat healthy. No, definitely do that. You deserve to be supported through this time, through moving your body um, and working on your goals and having something in place. And you can have these goals, but I think it's way less about knowing the information or writing out the goals. Do you know how many times I've written out my goals? Do you know how many times I've tried to follow a new workout plan? Like we know what we need to do. There's usually a part of us that um, goes to these behaviors that are not ideal for us because that part of us doesn't know how to deal with the stressors of life, um, might be running away from certain things. And, you know, you really want to address those traumas. You want to address the stresses in your life. But on top of that, we have that other part of us that really wants to change, but we want the change from a place of a very egotistical. And I don't mean it in like a really bad way. I just mean like that part of us um, wants to be loved, wants to be accepted, wants to be um praised wants to be whatever and that's great it's a natural thing for us to want to evolve and also for us to want to be wanted but when that part of us is super hyper focused on getting that outcome then it just creates a lot of disconnect between those these two parts and you end up becoming a huge tyrant on yourself and you end up doing things way too um, all or nothing. Um, this part of you gets very critical. This part of you says you have to do it 100% or nothing at all. And then you end up falling off, of course, because you're a human being. It just doesn't work like that. And not only does it not work like that, you don't need to be 100% to be healthy. You don't need to have every single thing in place in order to um, be fit or be healthy or whatever. So it's retraining the stories you're telling yourself from that part of you, but of course addressing that part of you that is struggling, right? The one that keeps going back to the old behaviors, the self-sabotage that's not really self-sabotage and, and which is actually really trying to keep you safe from something. So I have a lot of episodes, which I will definitely put in the show notes if I think that you should go to any of them. Cause I know I have addressed this type of inner conflict that happens within us, especially when it comes to health and fitness. Um, and honestly, guys, my book is going to heavily address these two parts of you. And I take you through the journey from being 16 years old until where I'm at right now, um, for my internal glow up. And, um, I hope you guys really enjoy that. But anyways, I hope that this episode made you think a little bit differently about being the healthiest version of yourself and remind yourself it's going to be fine that you don't have it all figured out yet. Like you do not need to have all the answers and just like wake up one day and just be okay with not 
strictly dieting or um, you know having the best body image days or being okay with the fact that your skin's not where you want it to be or if you're struggling with any sort of chronic illness like just be positive like no there's going to be days and that's okay you don't need to but on top of that we have to persist in this version of ourselves that we really want to be who is that version of you what does she look like what is she doing how does she feel what is she thinking and you need to have a practice and you need to do this every day it's not going to be over overnight you have to practice these things the same way you did every single day when you were a little baby and you were trying to get up and you were trying to walk for the first time you did it every single day until you got good at it things don't just happen automatically especially when you've never been taught um, a healthy mindset when it comes to food when it comes to body image when it comes to your health so you know give yourself some grace and of course come back to this episode if you need please let me know on spotify and i'm saying spotify because they only have this available on spotify um what you think about this episode what you liked what you wanted me to maybe dive into even more anything like that just give me your feedback please i've been seeing some of your comments and i'm really appreciating you guys for responding and on top of that um leaving me reviews and i'm seeing your guys's reviews and you guys are just so sweet like you guys are so amazing i freaking love you guys and yeah don't forget to follow the podcast instagram so you can keep up to date but on top of that just be motivated to live your best most glowed up version of you of your life this summer and uh, next week we will talk more about the external glow up because we need to because we are glowing up into the best version of ourselves okay love you guys talk to you soon